that's all we've the screen. Um, hello everybody, I'm Paul. Um, you need five minutes to take out of Paul Hudson. Um, I'm going to talk to you about um, a hack day that I did uh, last weekend. I've never been to a hack day before. Um, I finally came up with one where I was going to have uh, a weekend free. And I thought, why not, I'll give it a go. It sounds like an interesting one. Uh, so this is a bit about my experience and the hack that came to the back of it. Uh, it's not the front end stuff, there's some back end bits and pieces as well, but I'll try and skip past that. So I'm not too much. Um, so I created an app um, at the end of the day, um, which was uh, it basically, um, actually to go back a little bit, the, um, the whole hack was about political data. So Parliament basically said, uh, we're going to give you loads and loads and loads of data, which I'll show you some more, uh, about in a minute, um, and you go away and make something cool with it. And that, that was essentially what the, the whole thing was. Um, and it was all run by uh, Rewired State, and they uh, they <coughs> come along to this big venue, went along, and there was, I don't know, 120 developers that turned up, um, all sat around, and then some of these groups formed, and people went off and did hacks, and little apps, and they did little apps for their iPads, and all sorts of things. Um, and I sort of thought about it before I went along, um, and so um, some of the graphical bits and pieces, David um, at the back there, decided to, um, to help out, and I just scrolled out a piece of paper and said, this is my general idea, can you make me something? And then we had a nice icon, um, but I'll go over that later on uh, a little bit. Um, so I thought, everybody votes in the same way you know, um, you will vote like your parents did, or you vote like your friends do, or like your, um, your social economic group votes. Um, but once you leave the booth, um, does your political party really actually represent you in any way? Um, you don't really know, because you don't know what the vote age is actually at the end of the day. Um, or, or how they're actually voting. So what I did was I made a map that basically asked you a load of questions, things that you think, i.e. Um, do you think that the VAT rate should have been increased, um, things that were more divisive um, in, in terms of talks um, and um, votes, and um, decided um, that at the end of it, I'd then collate all your votes and then compare them to how the actual political parties did. Um, actually, and you see a nice, a nice little chart that says you are most represented by these people. Um, so as we go on, so that. Uh, I'm going to skip past that because I explained it all around. Um, so, as I said, basically they gave you absolutely tons of data things, and I, um, before I started this, decided to try and get it up for that. So, basically, they literally gave me this list, or I'll go over this list, um, and you can see there's like literally tons and tons and tons of feeds uh, there. And the only one I really was uh, interested in was this one, which is um, some public WIC data. Um, they basically it's really, really handy actually. It's sort of felt a bit cheesy because they had a nice um, MySQL import of it all. So what I do is load it up, suck it in, and there it was all available for me just to use, um, which is absolutely brilliant for me. And there's some other nice bits and pieces there. And the other data that you can see on the list there, there's absolutely loads of information. It's amazing, and I've gone back to actually have a look at other um, uh, countries, uh, parliaments, uh, or voting things, and that data isn't available. So, like, for interest. Island, you, you can't find the data. I had some friends who said that would be a really great app, but I can't make it because there's no data about it. Um, so, getting on to it, how is it made? So, first of all, the one sign, which is literally a piece of paper, as David will tell you. This is what it's going to generally look like. How's that going to look? And then I also did some more uh, design time on the train on the way down there. Uh, so, got the laptop and tried to work out how the table is all going to fit together. Then uh, looked at the MySQL, um, how the data was actually been dragged in, trying to sift all the data, which I'll show you a bit in a little bit, um, and how that was all going to be built up. Then I created a load of web services and classes that basically uh, use data. I'm not a .NET programmer, so that's why I use .NET. And then I did the front end on top of that. So that's sort of a nice, easy way to, like a streamlined version of what Mac shows at all back. So database. Um, I'll show you the data in a sec, uh, so we imported it. Um, and it came out with these uh, PW type tables, and that's big enough. Yeah. These PW type tables, um, but the data is absolutely rubbish. So it all comes out of blob data, and uh, you can't really see what the votes are about. And actually, when you actually get into the, um, the particular motion, it comes out as a really small piece of Hansard text. Hansard, for those of you who don't know, and I don't know for very long, is all the scripts that Parliament generates. So all day long, people talk, somebody types it and they put it on a website, um, and then to make it even harder, they take a really small snip of it and said, this is the bit they're voting on, uh, which is just absolutely useful um, in, in a long run. 
Uh, they do have like links to um, URLs again, not really um, excessively. Uh, in there. So what I did was I, um, I made a little app, um, got my wife, Kate, to actually start going through pieces. She does a lot of stuff with the so I thought, and she said, oh, I know about news that's happening with these people around the state, this is when this happened. So she tried to find data, and that didn't really work either. So I made a little program so she could fit in, and it didn't work. Um, so what actually happened was, when I got down there, I, um, I asked for help, and uh, a woman called Serafina Anderson came along, and she said, don't code. I don't do anything technical, but I'm quite willing to sit down and crunch data for you. Uh, so she spent a day and a half literally going through loads and loads of this stuff. I gave her a list of these are the ones I'd, I'd like, things I'm interested in. She found a list of things she might be interested in, and then we had to try and correlate it with data. And it, was, it was pretty hard work. So anyway, all the data comes in, uh, and then all the votes come in. So uh, you can see those, yes, no's, eyes, whatever, um, and some abstains. And then I had to try and put that together next to the MPs. Uh, with the parties, which you can get on the, not on it here. So that tells you who they all are, so then we can go back and actually find, for instance, what Ben Gov is doing in Ipswich or whatever, and I can actually try and correlate that back as well. And that was the intention, but it didn't quite get there. Then. So yeah, so they just sifting it all the way through. So then, um, as I say, I built table structures in the background, and it was all done literally in notepad on, on the PC here. And trying to copy it across while I was thinking about it. Um, and so you can see my tables, uh, the ones that aren't prefixed by anything useful. Um, and essentially, all it is is um, test IDs. So basically, you can see there's um, some tests that happen and there's results. It's like a really, really basic table. Um, the results are like collated so I can make them really quick and easy to get to if something comes back to it. Um, and there's some procedures that actually are run. So, get your next question answer questions and at the end of it there's like a um, the main main swap suit that does everything is this um, this proc here which basically I said I won't go into too much of it so if anybody has any questions later you can ask me um, and it just processes it with a bunch of cursors going around trying to find uh, the information and pushing it out into the, into the right places and then collating it all and putting it into a nice table so I won't go into it too much. So then, um, there's only two web services actually, um, over the whole thing, I thought there'd be loads more, and I was going to write always a web service so people could just access data and push data in and out of it, um, but I didn't have time. It turns out, that guys are really difficult to code stuff really quickly, and I thought I could do absolutely <laughs> loads of stuff, and just can't. So, um, about, I don't know, 8 o'clock on Saturday night, I suddenly thought, perhaps I need to scale back just a little bit. I've written all these um, proc stuff, trying to get it working, and then realised I had nothing actually to show anybody off some pretty cool data that I thought was cool, but nobody else did. Um, so in the end, scale back and start doing this. So the question submit and calculate results. There's a load of classes behind that inside um, .NET that actually access data and push it all around. Uh, but for all intents and purposes, that was all there was on the back of the front end stuff. Um, and this is what it actually looked like. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit in a moment about responsive stuff, which I added in sort of later on. Um, essentially, I just wanted a nice flat design, uh, which is lucky because it's nice and easy to code. Uh, flat design, so I could just put something on the screen. It, there's only three pages actually, the whole outline is a very, very short um, thing. You get the home page, uh, you get a test page, so a question comes up, randomly selected, um, and there's a little bit of data um, inaccuracy with your questions. You get like loads and loads of questions from when Labour was in power, or those questions from when Conservatives sort of demo in power. So I've tried to balance that up since then, um, and you can also take the extended version, so you might do 24 questions or whatever, um, so you get a, a better one in the end. And then um, the results. So this is what gets calculated afterwards, um, and then pushes out some data. Um, the the colours um, that I put in there, just because the major parties and then the Green Party, because I was just interested to see where the Green Party came, and mainly because David's only provided me with four colours on that, so <laughs> <laughs> four colours actually used, um, which is good. So as I said, David said, um, "Yeah, sure, I'll help you out," and he went away in his lunchtime, and he. Did the first one, we had a quick, quick discussion about it, and he sent me this over, uh, which is incredibly helpful. And this is where I pulled out all the nice colour bits, made it look a little bit nice. And I think actually looking at everybody else's hacks as it went over the, um, uh, the, the sort of the day, um, it didn't, but it, it looked quite good compared to some of the other ones. Some of them were absolutely amazing. They've done all these magical stuff with uh, bits I just can't do, make pictures out of um, different faces of people um, with, with their policies and stuff, which really, really clever. But this was um, this really good. And then uh, turn it into a nice 
responsive design, um, not using less or SAS or anything like that. Uh, it was just literally just media queries that sent the background because that's what it was. But then on the other hand, because it was a sort of flat design and just blocked type items that you could just stick down the page so it's nice and quick. That's coming kind of quite quickly towards the end. Of it. I can show you those code bits later if anyone's interested. Um, so the two questions that come to the back of it is one, can I answer more questions? Because everybody kept saying, <coughs> definitely not represented by those people. And it turns out even when they take the extended test, they're still represented by the people that were there. Um, and people want to see more information about the results. So I've actually um, started working on bits so you can actually see each and every one of the questions you've answered, how you answered it, and how people actually did that. So you can really see I'm just not making stuff up in the background. Because that was the other question that I got ended up having, how do I really know what's going on, how the calculation is real. Um, I'm frustrated with that question. So, is there any other questions? Yes. Are you going to go to another hack day? Yep. Yeah, definitely. I think it's one going to be in Ipswich actually. Um, next year they're trying to set up one for government data. Um, so, I don't know what the government data will be, but it sounds really interesting, so I'm going to go. Um, definitely. I, I really enjoyed it. It's like a, I was saying earlier, um, Stuart, it's got a geek, geek Nirvana. You, know, you go along, <laughs> feed you as much food, sweets, fruit, they bring in beer. And then you sit there and you code. It's just really, really nice. There's people wandering around in groups that are just come along and say, Hi, we've got an house bear, do you need some help? Or you can go around and just look at other people's projects. It's a really nice experience. You can learn an awful lot about different languages, you can learn a lot about data and what people are really interested in. And at the end of it, they have like a big um, show and tell where you stand up and everybody's made a map and submit it. You stand up and you present it. You've got three minutes to run through. So it's almost like a three minute presentation here. And then there are three minutes worth of questions where you try and answer them questions from the judges um, and that was really really interesting as well seeing what people had come up with in those two days. And some people had sort of dived around and done two or three hacks and some people would just focus on one really big one. Some people had finished, some people hadn't finished. Some people had made cool stuff like uh, one of the guys went off and made a Node.js um, uh, plugin like module um, that would actually access all the full data that you can see there so you should have made a way of getting into it in Node which is really useful from a technical point of view if you really liked it. The judges didn't really understand <laughs> so if you didn't win it was really, really cool. Any other questions? Yes. Um, have you had any interest from any journalists or um, politicians or anything about actually using your app? Not the politicians. I don't think they really want me to come out and tell them <laughs> that their, their core base isn't actually really who they think they are. Um, no, uh, we've had some people, there's like some journalists there that were going around and talking to people. Um, and that was really interesting. Um, and had some film people that were going around. Um, but no, other than that, I've had some questions and people coming back to me on Twitter and asking about bits and pieces. And a lot of the Parliament team were really interested in it. Um, even though they're sort of supposed to be um, impartial, they thought well, it's an interesting use of the actual data and try to push it out so other people can try it out. It's a way of trying to get people more involved in actually what's happening in Parliament. Because at the moment people just go, go on, as I say, cast a vote and then go away and then complain about everything afterwards. Where in reality, they can actually make a real difference. There we go. And it's all live, so um, it's at. Uh, what your true colours uh, com, so you can all have a go on your mobiles or on your computers and just uh, pass through it, um, and it should all work fine. Any other questions? Sorry, just the, the counterpoint to that. Have you considered like how you could use the data you collect from that website in terms of you know what questions? And that's another question actually. What, what is the question that most people answer most definitively about? Um, um, I just I'm going back and have a look to see if everybody's answering yes or no to certain questions. Mm -hmm. um, in my experience. They, they haven't, it's like a real random mix. And if there's actually a collaborative um, type one, if I assume my, um, my computer's still connected to my iPad, you can jump on the Wi Fi if you need to, just do it to use the It should just be, yeah, add it up. Why should I just show you? Um, it's not the actual one, it was just a test one that I had on my computer. So I've created like a collaborative one, so I can see what order it was. Um, this is my test data, when I was doing yes, no, back to front, you know, as I go through it, just trying it out. Um, and I'll just tell you, and actually, it's, it's really surprising, there isn't much, it's like a real breakdown of how people would vote in, in real elections. And that was really interesting to me, I thought it would be like massively skewed one or the other, but it's really not, it's like a real change around. What I did think about doing is creating um, a way of, we know there's a vote coming up, so there's going to be a debate, how would you actually vote on it, and then email you. Um, how it was actually done when the data actually comes through so you can actually then see if people are really representing you and how your particular politician voted, that sort of thing. I'm going to that, yeah.
One of the questions that I asked on, on Facebook was um, about the, the wording of the questions and when you worked with the, the girl that you talked about. The snippets that you showed us in the database of, of what they're voting on, I, it's in motion or something, was the name of the field. How, how defined are they? Because you, you guys are working to kind of distill them down. Are they voting on something that's a bit fluffy? They, they don't actually really vote on one question. That's, that was one of the main problems. So what we did is we took the, the main bill, sometimes, or we took the main element that they like vote on, like loads of amendments. So one party says, oh, you stick that one in and we'll be happy to vote for it because you'll stick this other one in there. And it all ends up like that. But when it all comes down to it, there's like some main bits that we're voting on, like, for instance, should people be held for more than, uh, or for 40 days? You know, terrorist outfit or suspects without being charged. Those are like the key things. And all the other stuff's like bump in the background. Okay, there's some really key bits actually happen as it goes on. But um, yeah, we, we sort of had to almost take a pump at that side, side of it and say, that's generally what they're talking about in this one. Um, there's no, it's really interesting, there's nothing in the data out there that'll actually really tell you what the vote was about. Um, somebody made something called Metabill and one of the other hacks that actually did give you that sort of information said, here's all the amendments that have happened. Here's when that actually happened. Um, so if we'd have had that before, I think it would have made Serafina's job an awful lot easier and my job easier when we were trying to do it. And that's why there's only like a limited number of questions in there at the moment. We just don't have time to go through and find those more. And even then, you can say, they voted on this day, but can you find it in the, the text? You can't find it. There's like 50 different votes that have happened or um, ballots. I say 50 is probably a bit of an exaggeration, but it's like really in depth. You have to try and work out which one it generally is by the time. So, Sorry to the current bit. So even though they've exposed the data, because of the system itself, it's still kind of obfuscated away in... Yes. Yeah, it's like that. It's, it's, it's not good. They've actually got um, people now that instead of um, writing it in really like, archaic ways, they've actually started trying to write it in nice, easy to understand ways, so people, general people, can go along and say, I understand exactly what they're talking about, rather than um, they're just focusing on Amendment 5, and this particular thing, you can't see what Amendment 5 actually is. Which is, you know, a bit Would your, um, your results be a bit skewed because you've only got a yes, no answer? And, and there's parties with lots of different stances, so you might not get an, an accurate picture of, of, of where, where you, you lie politically. Yeah, yes, in a way, um, because I, I wanted to do it like yes and no, I really wanted to make people decide one way or the other. Um, lots of people have asked for the abstain vote, or um, I just can't be bothered vote, and then try and like. Um, put some sort of weighting on it so if they're, they're not bothered really so it's like a really important thing to them that gives you more weighting uh, but my math isn't very good so I haven't got to go back and do that <laughs> just yet but we'll um, it's interesting though that say the Green Party um, who only has one um, one representative we have to try and make it balanced so instead of it just combining the votes together and just piling them up so all those Conservatives and you know, Labour and, and Lib Dems won because there were the most people in there we have to sort of do it on a percentage basis on how much they turned up and voted so if they turned up and voted um, in the same way as you, that was for the Green Party, 100. Um, if they didn't, it was zero. Um, it's surprising actually how many times the Green Party don't actually turn up. Like, that was one of the most interesting bits I got off the back of it. They don't turn up. It doesn't seem like the kind of thing that you, have, you see on the Guardian or the BBC, mm. it's like, the, 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 like the widget, you have a good cool little mini app to say, and then people, you can share your results, do a little quiz and share your results. Well. I don't think anybody ever shares political data. <laughs> I've yeah, discovered no one's shared it with anybody yet. They're yeah, sharing stuff alone. Yeah, because they kind of people want to keep themselves. Yeah. Yeah. More than that, because it's never the results they expected. Oh, right. So, so they don't want to share it. It's like, that's wrong. That's, yeah, yeah. That's, that's not what I think, but actually it works out that it is. Um, some people come out correctly. Has it borne out what people, I don't, have, I don't consider myself to have a particular affiliation. I've done it like three times, and they're different every time. So they, uh, they kind of have people told you that it's. So I was about, um, there was a guy um, who was at the pub today, he said, I literally can't tell you really what my results were because that is so wrong. <laughs> my girlfriend <laughs> can. He said this on a longer version, he says, it's all right now. Yeah, it's balanced a little bit more. Um, but yeah, so, and some people just said, I don't want to take it to, I don't want to see you know, what's going on there with it. It's, it's like a weird mix of people. People are very dodgy about politics and religion. And uh, more of a technical question. What did you use for your graphing library? Like, is it just, um, just or I just found a little because I thought about writing it and I thought it's half past twelve and suddenly probably <laughs> probably not trying to do that. So um, I ended up going and using JQ bar graph. Um, and it's a really, really nice way of actually getting into it. So if I show you um, the results now, it's actually coming together. Um, 
So all you do, basically, I, I output that data I showed you earlier, so I had um, the commons are limited and data that's in the database. Uh, let's test stuff. So you see over here is the results in my test database. And they just come out, it's come to into pipes and into type things. And all I do is I just jump through it, split them all up, and then um, put them out. I could, could have done it better, um, but in the day, I just wanted to, um, to, to get it working. And then uh, when it gets to that array, uh, which I'm generating here, it then pushes it in here. It works at the page width, um, depending on um, whether it's the mobile version or not, um, and then spaces out. So with the page width, I decided I wanted to, so when you're on the mobile version, you get five or six columns, when you're on this version, um, you get the the 12 columns or all, all the different columns you get out, but just, just to make it so you, you've got the data, but you might not get as much data as it comes down to. It's a really good little um, app though, or a little um, plugin. Uh, it looks nice, and it's, it's nice and easy to actually style up um, at the end of the day, uh, which I was quite pleased about, because um, it made my life a lot easier. Sometimes I've used some of them like um, JQ widget stuff, and that's quite complex, um, and also costs money, whereas this one's free and available. Any other questions? Cool. That's it then. Thanks very much.